You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. And this is to go even further beyond! Let's go! The hell are you thinking? So, what do you think? Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to beat Skyrim like it just went for your wallet. Now the rules of this run are very simple. Only fight with your fists, only level the heavy armor skill, and don't wear amulets or rings. I chose to do it on expert difficulty, but you can choose whatever you want. So the first step in making your overpowered puncher is to pick the Argonian race. Then follow Rayloff into the keep, and you'll meet up with the officer who tried to cut your head off. So lay the smack down on that tin head and steal her armor. Then fight your way out of Helgen. If your health gets low, you can use your handy dandy hist skin to heal up mid-combat. As an Argonian, you'll also be able to do 10 damage with your fists instead of the 4 damage that most races do. And while Khajiits can do 22 damage, the Argonian fist fighter will outclass them eventually, as you'll see later on. Now since you're not allowed to buy or sell anything, as that would raise your speech skill, you should start picking up gold anywhere that you can to pay for future armor training. Another goal for this run is to collect one of every type of heavy armor gauntlets. You already have the Imperial Gauntlets, and you should be able to acquire Iron Gauntlets pretty easily by fighting bandits. So look for the ones with horned helmets, kick the snot out of them, and add their gloves to your collection like you're a buffer version of Ash Ketchum. Now talk to Girder and Riverwood, relieve her of her health potions, and tell her to send you to Whiterun so the guards will let you in without passing a speech check. Then take a cart ride to Winterhold so you can get to the Serpent Stone. Just ignore the Serpent. He's too dangerous to take on at this point. Then touch the stone, and you'll have the ability to paralyze people once every 24 hours. Don't use it in combat, though, since it actually does a bit of damage over time. Now go back to Whiterun and sign up with the companions. Vilkas wants to see what you can do, so beat on his shield a bit to show him you mean business. Then start doing jobs for the companions so you can earn some gold. Some of the low lowlifes of Skyrim may try to bypass your heavy armor using magic, but you have hissed skin, so it doesn't even matter. So kick the snot out of the bandits at Silent Moon Camp near Whiterun, then run along their wall and drop down into this tower here. You should be able to find a couple of strong healing potions despite being low level, and you can also take their money. Now go train your heavy armor skill with Farkas, paralyze him with the Serpent Stone power, then crouch and spam the Take Item button on him as he gets up, and you'll be able to take your money back without raising the Pickpocket skill. Then just wait 24 hours and do it again until your skill reaches 30. Then take the Fists of Steel perk and any other armor perks you can afford. Now go get the Steed Stone near Solitude so your heavy armor won't slow you down while wearing it. Then travel to Foral Host, which is near Riften. Talk to this guy, make him give you the key, and enter the Haunted Tomb. Now the way Fists of Steel works is that it converts the base armor rating of your gauntlets into attack damage. Taking heavy armor perks won't change this number, it's all about the base number. So kick the snot out of the first zombie ghost you meet and take his gloves. Because these gloves are actually bugged and give you 18 damage like Daedric gauntlets do, which is the highest gauntlet armor rating in the game. Then continue the companion's quest line, and you'll be handily mashing in faces left, right, and center. These silver hand guys tend to carry a lot of gold, so make sure you check their pockets after pile driving their ugly mugs into the dirt. And the next step is to become the absolute beast you always knew you were, just in a more literal sense this time. As a werewolf, you'll be able to do massive damage with your claws, but you're not here to claw your enemies to death, you're here to punch them. So keep smacking the ever-loving tar out of the skin supremacists in your unstoppable crusade for furry acceptance. Krev the Skinner, more like Krev the Dinner. No, you probably shouldn't eat people. It's still cannibalism even if you are a wolf boy. 
Anyways, go talk to Ufgird the Unbroken in Whiterun, kick the snot out of her, take her lunch money, and lead her outside the city. Then kick the snot out of her again. Sorry it had to be this way, Ufgird, but you killed a young man and you failed to join the Fur Society, and that's just not acceptable. And that's one more set of armor for the collection. Then you can go back into the city and steal the inheritance from the children she never had. You are a winner. Your next stop is Morthal. Find Baynor, tan his cheeks in a friendly fist fight, and then get him to follow you. Then lead him into the wilderness, and if you talk to him and transform at exactly the same time, then you'll be able to trade with him while in beast mode. The timing can be pretty hard to get right, so make sure you save before trying. Then give him all of your heavy armor and equip it to yourself from his inventory. The armor rating of the equipped pieces will stack, and more importantly, so will the damage from your gauntlets. Look at that crap. Knocked his lights out in one hit. And since you have all that armor on, you'll also be exceptionally resilient to physical damage. So get flipped, beefy boy. Now, there will be times when your defenses get overwhelmed, so go to the White Run Gate with a follower, drop your best healing potions, and tell your friend to pick them up. Then exit the city and go back in, and the potions you dropped will still be there in addition to the ones in your buddy's inventory. So repeat the cycle until you have a healthy supply of first aid for any given situation. Now continue the companion's quest line. Make sure you kick the snot out of every last one of these chicken-fingered featherheads, and then take their heads in case you need them for later. Then finish off the silver hand, lay the dead to rest, and then you'll be able to take Farkas as your follower. Ask him to train you in heavy armor, then go into his inventory and take your money back. Easy peasy. He can train you all the way up to 90 as long as you have a few thousand bucks, but if not, then just get it up to 70 and take the conditioning perk. This will basically do what the Steed Stone does, so you don't really need it anymore. Now for the next step towards obtaining ultimate punching power, you should raid the farms around White Run for cabbages, potatoes, and leeks. Then go into the Jarl's palace and swipe the tomatoes from his kitchen. Now mix together everything you just stole to concoct vegetable soup. Even though tomatoes aren't technically vegetables, but whatever. Anyways, duplicate your soup at the city gates until you have a decent amount. You'll see why later. And since you've just leveled up a bunch, you'll be approached by this rather unfortunately named individual on a recruiting mission. Tell him you want to sign up, head over to his HQ, and go where his boss sends you. On the way, you should stop by the freshly sacked Hall of the Vigilance, and you'll be able to find Steel Nordic Gauntlets and Steel Imperial Gauntlets. Now go and beat the crap out of some vampires and their hideous hellhounds. These guys are a bunch of spell-slinging wimps, so you won't have any trouble caving in their craniums. Hey, nice combo. But there's only one combo king around here, and it isn't you. Anyways, rescue the princess, take her back to her father, and accept his reward without question, just like in that Ring movie. And bada-bing bada-boom, you're a vampire now. Look at those beautiful fangs. Of course, this does mean that you'll be weaker in the sunlight, and your health and stamina won't regenerate, but that's why you made vegetable soup. Now, a big reason why we picked Argonian is that Argonian vampires are bugged, so when they do a right-hand power attack punch, they actually do five times base damage instead of the normal two times. So, drink some vegetable soup, and enjoy infinite chain power punches with massive damage. However, your pilgrimage of punching is not yet complete, because you don't have all the types of heavy gauntlets. So go to the Tower Stone, and it'll give you the ability to open locks once per day without raising your lockpicking skill. You'll need this to obtain a couple pairs of gauntlets. Then go to Markarth, kick the snot out of the local terrorist, and head into the Jarl's Keep so you can talk to Kel Selmo. He'll send you on a little bug hunt. And being a vampire, you are immune to poison, so the bug should be easy squishing. Then talk to Kel Selmo, and he'll give you the key to his museum. Give it a visit, and once you're inside, you can find a pair of Dwarven Gauntlets in this display case. So use the Tower Stone ability to open the case and swipe the shinies. If you get caught, then you should flee the scene, or else they'll take the Gauntlets back. And Markarth is probably the most heavily guarded city in all of Skyrim, so you might need to hijack a vehicle for a faster escape. Then once you're out of there, go to the Palace in Whiterun and steal a couple of platters. Being more careful not to get caught this time and take them with you to Karthspire. Kick the snot out of the disgruntled natives who were behind the recent terror attack in Markarth, then make your way through the cave until you find the giant face. 
drop one of your stolen platters, and use it to sprint your way through the face. It might take a few tries, but you will get through it eventually. Then come over here to this room on the left, and inside this chest you'll find the blade's armor set. Then step outside and use fast travel to leave the area. Then leg it to White River Watch, beat the heck out of Hajvar Iron Hand, and take his unique gauntlets because they can be stacked with the rest of your collection. Then head over to this old Polish ruin and delve inside. There should be some bandits inside if you find yourself getting thirsty. Falmer, on the other hand, don't taste very good and they're always high on mushrooms, so I don't recommend drinking from them. And eventually you'll come to this locked gate, so use the tower stone on it. And on the other side you'll find the Falmer gauntlets. Now to escape the cave you'll need to fist fight this giant robot here. Yeah, he's pretty strong with his bong breath and his hammer hand, but if you follow my guides then you've already punched out Super Smo. So kick the crap out of the steam bot and get yourself the heck out of there. You don't need the tower stone anymore, so feel free to choose whatever stone you want. I picked the lady stone for the health and stamina regeneration. By the way, you can use your vampire lord transformation to stack all the gauntlets you've collected so far. You can't stack multiple chest plates as a vampire, so just take all the heavy armor perks and wear whatever armor you think looks good. You'll be way above the armor cap regardless of what you choose. Now for the next pair of gauntlets, you should pick up this Daedra Heart from the Companion's Home and kick the snot out of a troll so you can take its fat. Then head over to the Orcish village of Largishpur. You'll find a giant there. Kick the snot out of the giant. Then give the ingredients you just picked up to the wise woman so you and the local chief can talk to Malakath. He'll send the two of you to go kill some more giants, so go lay the smack down on the giants like you're Caleb fighting the Anakim. Then the orcish chief will betray you because he's an insecure little wimp, so wipe the floor with him and steal his armor because it looks freaking cool. Sauron can go cry me a river. I'm the lord of the orcs now, jewelry boy. Anyways, the next thing you should do is track down Risad of the Khajiit caravans, ask about the bandits who have been giving them trouble, then go kick the snot out of the bandits. These guys may call themselves saints, but they're really a bunch of sinners, so wipe out the heretics and take their golden gauntlets. Now find the cage key and free the bug, because that's what nice people do. Then go buy a ticket to Soul's Time, head east from Raven Rock, and you'll find this guy fighting some fireplace monsters. Punch them back into the dirt, then talk to the guy and agree to do whatever he wants. Then search the scene for a fallen city guard and take his bone mold gauntlets. Continue your campaign against the Ash Pit boys. As a vampire, you will be pretty weak against fire damage, so try to close the distance quickly. But against physical damage, you'll be the tankiest lizard that ever lived. So beat the crap out of Mallet Man, and you'll get paid good money for it. Now delve into the Raven Rock Mine, talk to the guy with the mustache, and spelunk your way down to the bottom of this place. There will be some pretty hardcore death metal fans down here, but it's nothing you can't handle. Just tell them their music sucks and kick the snot out of them. Business as usual. The scariest thing down here is this weaponized Tesla coil, but even that shouldn't be able to stop you if you run fast enough. Now just pick up the Dragon Ball word, kick the snot out of the death metal cult leader, and read his manifesto. Turns out he had some pretty messed up fetishes, so you should probably just get out of there and tell Mustache Man what you found. In the mind, that is, not, not in the book. Anyways, go play around on Solstheim for a while, and eventually the Captain of the Guard will approach you again with more job opportunities. Turns out Solstheim is no shortage of punchable faces, and if you're gonna do something, why not get paid for it? Look at this dude. He thinks he's some kind of gangster with his little daggers and his slicked back hair. Eat asphalt, pointy. Argonians rule these streets. And that's another pair of heavy bracers for the collection. Now stack all the gloves you got and go fight your first dragon so you can activate your Dragon Ball powers. You're still weak to fire, but he's even weaker to getting face mashed back into the fossil record. And as a bonus to being a vampire, you have excellent cold resistance. So frost dragons are doubly out of luck if they ever have the misfortune of crossing paths with you. And with your second dragon down, you can unlock the dragon aspect shout, which means that once per day you can buff your fists so they do 25% extra damage on power attacks. And just to be sure it actually worked, I did a little damage test where I set the difficulty to adept, gave this fisherman 1000 HP, and gave him a couple of right hooks. So that's 440 damage without dragon aspect, and 575 damage with dragon aspect. 
So, needless to say, your right hand is a force to be reckoned with. Because you're always wrecking people with it. Now, if you find that your weakness to fire is too annoying, then you can go get the Atronach Stone for the magical protection. Personally, I didn't bother with it since I just spam healing potions whenever I get into trouble. If you want to obtain the Wolf Gauntlets, then you should keep doing work for the Companions until Vilkas and Farkas ask you to help them delete their personas. Which kind of makes me wonder why we spent so much time fighting the Silver Hand, but we needed their money. It was worth it, I suppose. And now the Companions will have their essential statuses removed, so you can go to town on Vilkas and steal his gloves. Then take out all the witnesses, and then just keep punching and punching and punching and punching. Not that I would ever do that. These guys are my besties, you know? Anyways, the rest of the heavy armor gauntlet types either aren't available at this level or aren't worth trying to find in my opinion. And seeing as you're already freakishly strong at this point, why even bother? Look at this so-called master vampire. Trying to hide from me? I don't think so. There can only be one. Now go track down the wizard who armed the saint's bandits and put the bug in the cage. He's a super powerful mage, and he can summon an army of golden waifus to protect him, so hotkey your healing potions and spam them like there's no tomorrow. Then beat the ever-loving snot out of the dimension-warping, cat-harassing, bug-caging, basement-dwelling, no-good, no-life, friendless, shameless, maidenless, underwear-model-wannabe-reject, then teabag his corpse.